The very first thing I want to talk about before we even talk about doing the kit, Bob Lundy, and I always like to give credit to him because I think he's a genius in coming up with this or promoting it. I don't know if he invented it, but I was giving credit for it. He made a sanding board. And this is nothing but a piece of very flat melamine. Mine's about, I don't know, an inch thick. You can't already see it. There you go. It's a pretty thick board. It's very, very flat. It's very high density, very smooth. And what I do is, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I've got a pencil line over here. And I take tape, and I tape this area off. I tape the area up here at the top that you can't see off um, because I don't want the spray glue to get on that. Then I'll spray glue this whole area take my sheet of sandpaper, and I like to use 100 grit or maybe 120. The instructions from Yelton say to use 220. That to me is a little, little fine. I like the one or the, or the 125. Anyway, I'll flip that over um, and not on top of the glue, but separately and spray the back of it. These spray glues hold much better when you spray both the piece you're gluing and the substrate that you're gonna glue down to. So I'll let them both set for about 10 minutes while the um, spray glue kind of dries and then line it up down here on this corner and get at least one edge straight. It's nice, this one's almost straight, it's not quite, but it's close. But this one is right on the money. That means that I can come in here when I need to, and if I need to sand something just barely on that edge, I can do it. So stick it all down and then I use a brayer, one of those rubber rollers, and I mat it down until it's really tight and good. Leave it for an hour or so, so it can kind of set up and really tack. Um, and now, you have something that you can sand parts, large parts, small parts, all parts uh, can be sanded and made extremely smooth and, and even on them. Um, just a great tool to make before you ever start your construction. So let's, all right, so let's take a look at the kit. This is the way it'll come to you. Um, and all the pieces and parts are in here, of course, along with the instructions. And then once you open it up, I've laid it out. Now that one I just showed you is HO. This one happens to be the O scale kit that I'm gonna build. Uh, but we have the body uh, for the tires, a couple of axles. We have the short and the tall version of the mass. So you can either use this like in a warehouse or maybe out in a lumber yard where you might need more height. There's a box crate here, a pallet, the forks. And then this is part of the safety cage, these three parts. And then the short wire goes with the steering wheel. So these are all the parts that you're going to need uh, to work with. And I'm just going to brush them literally aside here. I've worked on some of them, so we'll talk about what we do at this point. I took the wheel, which they say to take and flatten the back side, and I just rubbed it here on my sanding board. And then I did the same thing with my forks. And they say to sand it until you can actually get the pallet here to slide on. So that took a good bit of sanding. They are much thinner than what they were when they originally came in the kit. And the box, I kind of sanded a, little bit, sanded a little bit before I detailed it. I sanded these. Now, these are a little trickier, and I want to slide my board up here. But what you want to do is I want to line this up on the edge. Notice that I, when I talked about making the sanding board, I said be sure and keep it on these two edges. I want to put that lug that's going to fit into the front of my body here, that's the way that's going to mount up in there. You can kind of see it from the top and from the side. It doesn't fit um, very well when it first comes, so the first thing I did was I sanded all four sides of this square lug, and I put it straight up and down here and straight up and down this way, get it as straight as you can, run it back and forth a couple of times in all four directions. I can't do it here because of my table, but I had it overhanging. Do that. That'll square this lug up a little bit, and then take your exacto and square any kind of flash that happens to be um, on this pocket. Get rid of that. And then the lug should fit right in nice and tight. And your wheels, uh, mine went right on the axle without any trouble at all, but you can put one of those on, run that through the axle hole. I dry fit everything just to make sure that it all works. You'll see it looks like, get on there. Come on, come on, wheel. Why are you being stubborn? There we go. So it looks like that they're awfully wide, but that wide condition is because you need it to clear the mast here of the forklift. So I need a little bit of clearance in here on each side, and that will allow it to, to roll freely and not 
run into that mast. And the rear axle, same size. You can put that on and test that out and make sure it's right. Now, some special things that I did to mine ahead of time. You can probably see here. I took my Exacto and I took um, a Dremel with a sanding drum and I sanded this down. I made it look like somebody had been sitting there and it had been used for a while and it's kind of dented. I don't know if you can see the, yeah, you can kind of see it's got a, I tried to give it the two legs out here and the bottom imprint there. We'll use the word bottom because this might go out wider than just right here locally. And we'll sand a little bit in here to, to give it kind of a little dish as if somebody had been sitting there. Um, and otherwise I just simply scrape things uh, to get them nice and clean and neat and ready to go. Okay, so the only other thing I want to talk about it, I'm going to kind of shove this block out of the way here for a little bit and bring my um, box and my pallet back in. I used to have the nickname when I worked at, uh, at Woodland Scenics and at uh, Vermont American of Mr. Exacto because I carried an Exacto like this in my pocket. And of course, I always say the smart men put it in a sheath. So I had a brass tube that just barely slip fit. I cut it a few times, bent it over, and put solder on it so this would be solid. Also, so if the blade falls out, it can't come out the end here and cut you on the pants. But um, put that on. These are not exacto um, knives. They're Excel, I think, and they have this hex, or some of them have a square nut up here, and that keeps it from falling through. So it's actually coming up short, if I put it like there. It's a little short at the bottom, which is where you want it. You don't want it to come down there and poke on it all the time. Anyway, so that's one trick if you want to carry an exacto around with you all the time. The other thing is I like to choke up on this blade. Pinch it down to where it's really, really short. And then I can literally go in here with just that tip going. And I can brush some grain into that wood. Just like that. And you can see it a little bit better. I didn't do the bottom of the palette because it doesn't really count. But you can see here this dullness is all the scratching that I did here with my Exacto to get that uh, grain. I also took it on my sanding board, sanded it flat first, but a lot of this grain is just done by simply taking the tip of that Exacto and scribing and putting some grain on those boards. And when I go to paint that now, I'm hoping that some of that grain will hold up with some of our good modeling paints that uh, don't fill too many holes. So the next step after I've dry fit everything together is to go ahead and do the assembly. And it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, front axle here, rear axle, put the mast in, steering wheel in. If the steering wheel sets a little high, you can drill it down a little bit. But otherwise, this kit's really in very good shape and really ready to assemble when it first comes to you. So good luck. Hope you enjoy your forklift or tow motor, however you care to, to pronounce it. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing your results on the, inter on the Internet. So until we meet again, go out to your railroad room. And let your trains put a smile on your face.